Hello everyone and welcome to another Arthritis Help Movement Improvement Session where you learn to move differently so you can feel better. I'm Dr. David Sofer and today we're going to be talking about how to loosen up the neck and shoulders. Uh, sometimes we speak about reaching, reaching up and reaching out, but in this session we're going to be really focusing on rotation through the shoulders and some rotation through the neck. So not so much reaching, but how the shoulder spins in the socket. Now the shoulder is what we call a ball and socket joint, so you have a, you have a ball in the arm and then you have a socket in the shoulder joint and they come together and they spin on one another and you've got your rotator cuff muscles that control that spinning. It's a very complicated process with a lot of muscle coordination and a lot of shoulder mobility needed, so it's not surprising that it's a common place for people to have challenges, either tendonitis or breakdown in the rotator cuff tendons, or sometimes even breakdown in the joint, getting arthritis in the shoulder. So today we're gonna to learn how to free up the shoulder, free up the chest, free up the neck so we can move as smoothly, freely, easily, pain-free as possible. So for this session, we're just gonna be lying down flat on our backs and uh, maybe a pillow for some comfort for your head. All right, let's get started. So we're gonna start just lying comfortably on our backs, perhaps a pillow underneath your head. If you feel more comfortable with a pillow underneath your knees, you can do that. And we're just gonna settle into the floor, feel comfortable, and just start with a little check-in, get a sense of how we connect to the floor. So we're just gonna take a moment, soften the breathing, relax our minds, Allow ourselves the permission and the space to take an inward focus. To tune out everything in the rest of the world and just be within ourselves and feeling our own bodies. And so you're just gonna take a notice how your body sinks into the floor and how heavy you can be and how much tension you can release and allow yourself to be flat. Today we're gonna to take particular notice, spend attention feeling how our mid-back connects with the floor, how much pressure you feel through this kind of middle area of the back, if you feel tension through or pressure rather through a small concentrated area or if it's a kind of a larger diffuse area. How easily can you find your way back to the floor? How willing is that upper back to open and allow you to find the floor? And we're also going to take particular notice of the shoulder blades. And as you lie here, do the shoulder blades feel like they're kind of tucked under or flat or kind of incorporated with the body and easily lying into the floor? Or do you feel sometimes that maybe one side or both sides are a little bit pokey, that the shoulder blades are kind of digging into the floor? Do you get a sense that your shoulders and chest are able to open broadly? and conform down to the floor? Or do you feel that the shoulders maybe rise up a little bit and hold off the floor? Doesn't matter where you are. Don't fight to be in the place that you think you should be. This is just sensing self, purely diagnostic. There's no ambition, no intention here. Just getting a start to see where we are. The next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna take I'm going to start with the left arm, and we're going to put it out into a 90 degree position, so kind of like a T. Elbow bent, so the fingertips are facing the ceiling. And you're just going to let the hand fall back and see how far does it go. Don't force, don't push. Just see how far does the hand go. Does it fall all the way back to the floor? For some of you it may, for, for me it doesn't. And then we're just going to take note of about where is it floating, where is it where does it land? Or if it's on the floor, how easily does it find the floor? If it's not, what the distance is? And then we're going to come back so that the shoulder is about 90 degrees and the elbow is about 90 degrees, finger straight up. And then we're going to let it fall forward and see where does the arm gently, comfortably land? Not pushing, not forcing, right? But just where does it go on its own? Do the fingers 
you know, find the floor? Does the forearm come close to the floor or is it up? So you're just going to take notice and see how much distance you have there and leave it alone. You're going to do the same thing on the other side. Shoulder to 90 degrees, elbow bent to 90 degrees, fingertips facing the ceiling. Let the arm fall backward and see where does the arm land and see if it's easier or simpler on one side than the other. For me, my right arm goes back a little further, not all the way to the floor, but a little further than it did on the left. And takes a, a note of where it is, and then we're going to let it fall forward again, still staying at 90 degrees. Don't let that arm straighten out. And just see where it lands. But going forward seems a little bit more limited on my right side than it did my left. And that's not uncommon. Sometimes it can be better one direction than the other. Perfect. Now we're just going to lie here and we're going to start with the left arm, shoulder bent to 90, fingertips up to the ceiling again, and we're just going to move the arm forward and backwards in space, keeping the elbow down on the floor and feeling that you're just spinning the upper arm, rolling the upper arm like a rolling pin back and forth just in your easy range not forcing the arm to do anything extra. We don't want to feel like we're forcing it up, don't want the shoulder to pop up in either direction, no strain. And I want to see if you can feel the upper arm, can you feel every piece of that upper arm kind of contour and roll into the floor? Can you make such uniform contact as that upper arm goes forward? And then can it roll from kind of the front part of the arm into the center of the arm and then into the back part of the arm as you roll back and just get the sense of that arm bone spinning within that shoulder socket. So we're just trying to feel what that arm bone spinning within the socket is, but the socket, the shoulder itself shouldn't be doing a lot of moving up and down. It should be staying pretty steady. If you find that your shoulder's popping up, you're trying too hard, you're going too far. Now, I want you to notice, let the arm fall back, perhaps, into this position, and make sure you stay in your comfortable range. Remember, rule number one, rule number one, always be kind to yourself, always, always, do not work into pain, do not push yourself outside the boundaries of what your body's giving you. Be kind, find more ease and less effort. So we're gonna let that arm fall back, and you're gonna notice that if you turn your head to look at the arm, it may be easier for that arm to fall down. And then we're going to come back up and bring the head back to neutral. And we're just going to explore that, that combination that as we look toward the arm, letting the head be heavy in the pillow and just rolling toward the arm, that the arm falls a little bit simpler, a little bit easier, and then we'll come back up. And if the arm is easier to get down as we look at it, it should be a little easier to go the other way as we look away. So we're just going to do this head rotation where we look to the arm as it falls. And then we look away from the arm as it goes forward. And we're just going to see if we can find a smooth, easy, comfortable connection. If you have a stiff neck or pain in the neck, make sure you're only moving slowly to what your body gives you. But that this movement is harmonious. There's a synergy here that allows you to move more smoothly, more freely, more easily if the movements are combined. And just feel that nice ability to allow the head to free the shoulder and the shoulder to free the neck. And try to do them in a way that feels like the movements serve each other. Not just moving your head, moving your arm because I said so, but see if you can feel the ease that there's this, there's this ratio of movement between the head and the neck that makes sense, that you only want to move in certain amounts, in certain directions, to serve that feeling of ease and softness. Good. Okay, just lie down and relax again. And as you lie here, we're just going to take a sense of that 
shoulder and the chest and the upper back and the shoulder blade and feel just by doing that little movement, just by connecting those movements synergistically, can you feel perhaps that that left shoulder falls a little bit further back into the floor or that the chest maybe doesn't have as much of a small concentrated area of pressure, I'm sorry, in that upper back and that the shoulder blade is maybe tucked in a little bit. Maybe you feel it, maybe you don't. But see if you can feel any sense of change just by adding harmony, which brought ease to the movement. Now we're going to add one more addition. We're going to bend the right leg and bring the left uh, arm shoulder into that 90 degree position with the fingertips up. And you're going to, again, look at the shoulder. I mean, look at the left hand as that hand falls back. And at the same time, you're going to push through your left heel to gently roll your pelvis a little bit to the left. So you're rolling a little bit onto your left ribs. And so you want to feel that the push, it's not the knee falling over into midline, and it's not a lift, but it's a push that allows you to just roll into your rib cage on that left side. And then you're going to come back. You're going to let the head look away as the arm comes forward. And then as you come backwards again, we're going to at the same time look at the hand and roll, push through the foot to roll the pelvis into the rib cage and see if the foot can help flatten the ribs and shoulder, the whole left shoulder complex down to the floor and feel when we allow that to happen, how much easily, more easily, that arm falls back to the floor. If it doesn't get all the way back, that's fine. Work within you. And then we're going to do that a few more times. Look away, hand goes forward, look toward, hand goes back, rolling through the ribs. And see now we've got three movements that we're combining, but can we move them in a way that is harmonious? Can we move them in a way that makes sense? Can we make beautiful music through these three movements, right? If we have three musicians playing, they can all be proficient, excellent musicians, but if they don't play well together, they don't make that beautiful music. We want to have everything in harmony so there's just this ease and flow of movement, learning how to move the body in a way that promotes simplicity and ease. Feeling that you can roll into that left rib, into that left shoulder, letting that left shoulder find its way down into the floor, rolling as much as you feel as you need to. Softening the breath, softening that tension in the pectorals and the chest, softening that tension through the abdominals, not clenching the jaw or the neck or furrowing the brow. A lot of things to coordinate at once, take time, spend focus where you need to, and all serving that idea of easily letting this arm find its way back and the shoulder find its way back to the floor. And relax, lie flat. Check in with yourself one more time. See now that we've been practicing allowing this left side to fall to the floor, if we can feel any more contact with the left ribs into the floor. If that left shoulder blade is a little less pokey than it was before. If the left chest opens up and the left shoulder falls back any more than it did before. And you can even get a sense if you bring this arm and let it fall back. Does it fall back easier than it did before? And now I'm finding the floor where I couldn't before. I still feel a little tension here. It's not 100% easy, but it's definitely going further than it did. And forward, even there, a little bit more than it did to start. Beautiful. Okay, we're going to replicate this whole thing on the other side. So let's bring that arm into a 90 degree position, fingertips up to the ceiling. And now we're just just going to roll. Don't skip ahead of me because you know what I'm going to do, okay? Just roll. we got to go through the whole process. The journey is where the beauty is here, okay? And just roll that upper arm and feel that you can spin it and feel every part of that upper arm area, every part from the elbow to the shoulder making contact 
into the floor as you roll. And then contact, not pushing, but just resting contact into the floor as you roll back. And we're doing this just to get the idea. I like to even envision in my head that arm bone spinning on its long axis, kind of like a rolling pin, in through the shoulder socket. So just getting that feeling of that spinning of that upper arm into the shoulder. And only going where your body allows, not pushing into pain, not striving to be good or model or whatever you think you're supposed to be. Okay, we're gonna stop with the fingertips up to the ceiling again. We're gonna let the hand again, back of the hand fall back toward the floor. And we're gonna look at the hand and see again how allowing the head to look at the hand creates that falling, that easiness for the shoulder to fall, the arm to fall towards the floor. Maybe it touches, maybe it doesn't, doesn't matter. And then we're gonna look away and let the hand go forward. And we're just gonna get that nice connection, feeling for the harmony and the ease of movement as we allow the head to soften the movements through the shoulder. Still feeling that upper arm nice and connected in through the floor, even more connected in through the floor, not pushing, and just allowing the head to soften the shoulder and feeling that the two movements have a connection. It's not two separate things happening simultaneously. It is one movement, one motion that has multiple parts. Excellent. Just for fun, if we want to bring that hand back up so fingertips are facing the ceiling, let's look away from the shoulder and let that arm fall down. And notice how much restriction there is by turning the head away, right? What if we did opposite? What if we look toward the shoulder as the hand went down and away from the shoulder as the hand went back, just to mix ourselves up, just to do something more challenging, less harmonious, just to feel what it's like to move without that ease and fluidity. Nothing wrong with that, our bodies are quite capable, but doing that then makes it easier for us to feel the ease when we change back. So now we're gonna go back to the original way. Head looks toward the hand, the arm falls back, and feel maybe it falls back even more now, appreciating that nice harmony, that nice advantage that it had. Good, okay, relax, lie flat, let yourself fall into the floor. Check in with yourself, feel the easiness through the upper back. Feel the breadth of the chest and shoulders. Feel the ability of the shoulders to fall down to the floor. Feel that ability for the shoulder blades to tuck under, almost kind of sneak in and kind of slide into almost like a little pocket <laughs> uh, in the back instead of being pushed pokey out into the floor. And not perfect, just maybe a little bit better than it was before just perceiving for changes. Beautiful, now we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna bend the left knee, and we're gonna bring the right arm, shoulder to 90 degrees, elbow bent to 90 degrees, fingertips pointing to the floor, to the ceiling, and you're gonna let the back of the hand fall to the floor, look, and then you're gonna push through the left heel to roll into your right ribs and chest, and then you're gonna let it come back and look away, and you're using that left heel to find pressure to put yourself, place yourself onto your right ribs and almost the back of the right shoulder, flattening that down, which helps to flatten the arm, and then coming back and turning the head and rocking the body good and turning the head and rolling back. Beautiful, feeling for the advantage we can take when we position our body in a way that makes it easier to find this movement. Feeling now that we have three movements, but they're not three separate isolated movements that we're trying to coordinate. We have one single movement that just has three components. It actually has multiple components, but we're only focusing on the three of them 
what you're moving the hand, moving the head, and pushing the heel to move the hips and ribs. And feel how smoothly and easily the body can move, still feeling that you're getting that nice connected upper arm into the floor, into the surface with every movement. Easy and soft, good. Remember not letting the knee fall in past the midline, pushing down to roll the pelvis into the ribs, into the shoulder. Good. As you go, it should feel pleasant. It should feel soft. It should feel almost peaceful. Hopefully, you're not fighting with yourself. Sometimes it takes a while to develop the sense to let yourself move easily and not with tension and sometimes frustration or even anger. Okay, we're going to check in with ourselves now and feel how connected we are into the floor. Feel how different we are from when we first started. And recheck that arm and see how easily it just plops back to the floor. It falls back. We've taken away some of the restrictions. We've allowed for freedom and ease of movement. All right, that was fun. We're going to do one more thing here, okay? Kind of a little bonus, because uh, I like to add something fun at the end sometimes. So uh, this is fun for me if, <laughs> if you're like me. Um, uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to bend both knees. We're going to bring both arms into that position. And we're going to feel that we're going to allow the right arm to the back of the hand to fall towards the floor. The head is going to look at that right arm. The knees are going to fall towards the right. And the left arm is going to bring opposite direction, palm toward the floor. And then we're going to switch and rotate back. And we're going to just do that a few times, back and forth, feeling the head and the knees moving in the same direction, and always looking toward the hand that has, that's going up and back, back of the hand toward the floor. Looking away from the hand that's going palm to floor. Good. And feeling, I want you to think about that transition between the two. As you transition from one position to the next, feel your body's ability to roll from the ribs to the spine and then back to the ribs and into that end position. So from here, you're starting from kind of the outside lateral portion of the ribs. And then as you turn, you feel that transition as you go to the ribs, the kind of medial ribs toward the spine, and then into the spine, and then to the ribs alongside the spine, and then to the outside of the ribs of those rib angles. And feel that journey and how much contact you can make through that. If that's feeling good, instead of lifting the hands off the floor, we can slide them along the floor, which is kind of fun sometimes. And so slide the back of your hand along the floor until it turns over. And slide the hand along the floor so that hand that's back is going to palm up and then transitions to palm down as we go around. And it's just another way of getting to the same place. But it's a little bit even easier that we don't have to use the muscles to lift the hand off the floor. So it's even a little bit of a lazier type of movement, which, you know, I kind of dig. <laughs> if there's a lazier way to do it, I'm all for it. And we roll. And we roll. I'm feeling how slinky and how easy we can be. And all of a sudden, moving the shoulders has become a total body movement and whenever we can incorporate the whole body we're winning beautiful okay let's lie flat and relax do one final check-in get a sense of how you feel if we've diffused out any high areas of concentrated pressure in the spine if the chest feels enlarged, able to almost take in a little bit more air. If the shoulders feel broader and further back to the floor. If those back pockets, I'm sorry, if the shoulder blades feel like they're sliding back into their pockets a little bit. Good, you can test out the shoulders one at a time and see how easily they move in each direction. 
compared to before. Beautiful. From here we'll come into a sitting or standing position. Standing is even nicer. Uh, and you're going to stand up and you're going to get a sense of how tall you feel, how open you feel from the front of your chest, how balanced you feel over your heels, how your head feels like it's sitting on top of your frame, how expansive your chest cavity can be with each breath. Enjoying that feeling of being open, how easily your arms can move freely, they can move about. See if any of those trouble movements are maybe a little less trouble than they've been before. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining me this week and thank yourselves for doing the work. It is not easy. Good for you for getting it in and taking time to make yourself feel better. I'm Dr. David So for Physical Therapist. This is Arthritis Help. Don't forget to join me next week where we're going to do a whole new movement session so you can learn to move a little bit better. Thanks everybody. Take care.